Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's with a heavy heart that I dedicate this episode to Eddie Van Halen. It was such a shock to me when I heard of his passing. I mean, this is a guy who changed electric guitar forever. And just watching how many people have been affected by his death is just truly devastating. The guitar community lost something truly special yesterday. And the most surprising thing to me is that he was only 65 which he definitely used very wisely. But I thought for sure that my kids would be like 25 or 30 before I see, you know, modern day rock gods going up to the great concert in the sky. But if you happen to have missed it, he died due to complications with his throat cancer, which I find really interesting that he blames on the metal pick that he kept in his mouth for so many years. Like, you know, guitarists, we do it all the time. We need to do some finger picking. We just put it in our mouth just like this and then you're good to go. But apparently that traveled up to his brain and yeah, now we have these headlines. So I didn't really want to make an episode on this because I don't like capitalizing off of people's death and things like that. But what I really wanted to do today was go to Sweetwater, buy one of his signature Frankenstrats, do a nice little review and demo in memory of him. But unfortunately, I went to Sweetwater and yeah, they're all sold out. So that's not something that could happen. So why don't we do a rock or not segment on Eddie Van Halen guitars? Oh, and you better say rock on this one. But before we do that, just in case you're new to Van Halen or you need a reminder of what songs you need to go listen to next, here's the biggest ones that I suggest you check out. As a guitar player, I'm sure you guys have heard of Eruption. That song is just straight away from the beginning. Super blazing guitar solo. That's what introduced me to tapping. Hot for Teacher is another crazy one, but if you're not the best guitar player in the world, it's easy enough to do the da 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 part. I do that sometimes in my playing demos. Ain't talking about love, that's a classic. I'd completely forgotten about You Really Got Me, otherwise known as the song that follows Eruption. Running with the Devil, Panama's a really good one. Dance the Night Away is a nice one that's a little bit lighter in feel. I had completely forgotten about Ice Cream Man. Phil X turned me on to that song. I loved his cover of that. And then don't forget Little Guitars. This is the guy who breathed life my miniature Les Paul guitar series. And I loved playing that one on that tiny guitar. So instead of just being sad, how about we share each other's favorite Van Halen songs so we could use this for a learning experience to explore his legacy. And besides just being a musician, he actually did some guest star acting roles. One of my favorite scenes with him actually comes from Two and a Half Men. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I'm gonna give it a minute. You were in there with your guitar? Well, you never know when inspiration might strike. Let's go. Two burritos and a root beer float. But anyways, onto his guitar. This is the big one that he's known for, his original Frankenstrat. Now, just a little bit of background history between this is you can also find a black and white one that was this guitar before he repainted it. He also chose to get rid of the pick guard, so that's why I just have that little remnant right there. But then if you really look in here, you've got a single coil in the neck and a humbucker in the bridge. So we couldn't figure out how to wire up that neck pickup, so it's really just a dummy coil in there. It doesn't do anything. But he had his pickup selector switch within the middle position if he could use it. But it's just kind of there as remnants at this point. And the reason why that pickup is actually slanted is because it's an old Gibson pickup, I believe from like a 335 or something. So it wasn't spaced correctly for this particular guitar. So that's the true reason why it's slanted. And then you'll notice on his original and like really high-end replicas that he has a 1971 quarter right there. That was originally kind of used as like a block for the Floyd Rose type system. But apparently he stopped using that. But basically he just taped up a guitar, he was painting it, and then that's how you got this very iconic look. Now the black and yellow one is actually a different one, but that one was buried with Dimebag Daryl. There have been many remakes of this guitar at many different price points, but the one that I saw at Sweetwater that I was going for today was the EVH Stripe Series Frankenstein Relic. The thing that's always scared me away on these is the Floyd Rose. I'm just not a big Floyd guy. I don't have a big use for it, but he definitely knew how to use it pretty good. You get the locking nut up here and you got your headstock with EVH. And even though this is a brand new guitar, you know, 1699, it looks heavily worn in. I mean, this looks very similar to what he was playing. The way that they make the neck look all dirty like that. 
But apparently these things are made in Mexico. And they've got basswood bodies with maple neck and maple fingerboard. Oh, of course, now they say it's in stock. This is actually the new one that I was contemplating doing a review and demo on because it's kind of an interesting take on an explorer. They call it the EVH Stripe Series Shark. I think they call it a shark because they kind of have a little jaggedy edge right here. So it's like a mouth going cup, cup. But then they have these chains on here on these eye hooks. But what I found really fascinating here is it's a stop bar variety. That's why it kind of naturally appealed to me. But you also have a harmonica bridge. Gibson used those in the 70s. So seeing one of those on here, it's like, ah, oh, that's kind of a cool throwback there. You get mix match colored humbuckers, the double cream and then double black. But then take a look at this. We've seen something like this once before in the Jason Hook Explorers. Maybe he took it from this one. But you've got an output jack plate up there to mount your three-way toggle switch. And then you just have that completely exposed. Now in the five finger death punch signature, they used a conduit. Kind of like what you'd find in the tank or for just wiring in general, just to kind of cover that up. But some people would take that off just so it would be left bare. It's a kind of a cool guitar and is mainly because I don't have to use a tremolo system on it. And then you've got that uh, Kramer-esque headstock on it where it's kind of the banana style. And oh my goodness. Take a look at that. Three chrome, three gold. That's something that I would do. And a brass nut. Jeez, this thing's got a lot of cool specs. Let's see, ash body. That's impressive with a maple neck, pal ferro fretboard with burgundy and silver stripes. Oh, I like that location of the strap button. It makes it look like the eye, the eye of the shark that's biting down on it. The thing that's always stopped me from getting one of these before is I don't have anywhere near the skills to play something by Van Halen. Eruption's not as hard as people make it out to be. It's just you have to take some time to dedicate to learning it. But I also feel like that's the only thing you could play on a guitar like that. Or the only thing that you would want to play anyways. But let's see here. It looks like he was also known for these Wolfgang models. That's what he actually named his son. But take a look at this. You get the eye hook. So I'm guessing Zach Wilde might have took that from him. Because I know those eye hook things because of Zach. And something I forgot to discuss on that other one is the D-Tuna, I believe they call it, where you can do a drop D tuning even on your Floyd Rose. That's what that little thing is sticking out there. That's definitely helpful. You don't have to throw your whole Floyd Rose system out of whack. And I love that little kill switch there. This whole guitar reminds me of Buckethead. So that's cool that he probably influenced him as well. I mean, that's the thing about Van Halen. I mean, he influenced everybody. I mean, anybody who's picked up guitar has listened to Van Halen at some point and been awestruck the first time they listened to it. His tapping technique definitely changed the world and for the better. But I would have to say this is actually kind of an attractive design. It reminds me of like the Les Paul signature. It's like a offset 335, but still bared the Les Paul name. But hey, that's not too bad of a headstock design. Straight string pole, locking nut, that should stay in tune. Looks like this one is a basswood body with a Big leaf maple top, maple neck, maple fingerboard. Wow. It's either a misprint or they've dyed it somehow because I would have thought for sure that was ebony. Interesting lack of a first fret marker though. I think I would have preferred it. Is that a baritone guitar? That looks really big. Nope, just 25 and a half. And looking down here at these specs, yeah, it looks like somebody made a boo-boo on their website. I guess it's made in the USA. But if you want something a little bit cheaper, it looks like they have a special version. It seems to have everything except for the kill switch. Looks like a matte black finish. Still appears to have the ebony fretboard though. But I would assume that this is like some sort of a import brand. Apparently distributed under Fender's ownership. Now I'm sure it's kind of blasphemous to ask for this, but I would love a Frankenstrat with just like a wrap tail piece. <laughs> Kind of sacrilegious, but I think I would enjoy playing one of those even more. But it looks like uh, if you don't have a lot of money to drop and you really want Eddie Van Halen back in your life, here's one for about a thousand bucks. It doesn't have the additional routing. It makes it look a little bit cleaner, but not quite the same as his. But functionality is about the same. And this one's interesting, a Zircote top. Is the whole thing Zircote or is it just a top? Okay, yeah, it's just like a top veneer. Kind of like what PRS did. I like that. That's like a little tarantula. You can see part of its eyes and then it's got those little two hands at the front and then you got a couple of hands on the sides. Whoever bought this one definitely got a special little wood figuring right there. Is that a baked maple neck? Yup. That looks pretty good. 
EVH Wolfgang Standard. Only six forty nine. Ah, can't say I'm a fan of the Midnight Sunset version, though. That's like a, a burl top. I'm not a big fan of those. Hey, let's go ahead and uh, check out Reverbs. Maybe it's just me, but my first instinct when I heard of his passing is like, oh no, I need to get one of his guitars. <laughs> Support his family that way, because I'm sure they get something from these sales. So it does look like maybe there's a few in stock on Reverb. No, pre-order. But thankfully... If you are waiting, I mean, you're only about a month or two out at most locations. But if you really can't wait that long, it looks like the shark is pretty much your only thing. And I've heard mixed reviews about those guitars. So yes, uh, rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen. That was a shock. I will never forget where I was the day I heard that news. I had just finished recording that dove that we reviewed yesterday. And it's like, ah, geez, I should have should have played some Van Halen. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.